Welcome back to another video. Uh, someone messaged me on Instagram and asked if I would cover the criteria that I went through to choose this property. Uh, and also, I had a deposit on a place before, so she mentioned that as well. I was wondering if I could go into more detail on it, so I will. Uh, I'll do that at the end. Uh, but for now, I have my list here. I'm going to work my way down from the most permanent things that you can't have any control over down to the most malleable things and then you're gonna have to work this out yourself at the end but then you're gonna bring your budget in and then depend you want to kind of pick your ideal for all of these things and then you're gonna bring your budget in and you're gonna work your way back up from the most malleable to the least malleable um, which will help you zero in on what you should be looking at um, so the first thing on the list is climate and you can't we have no control over the weather but we can kind of choose um the general weather that we we can expect to experience in specific locations so if you like a more arid climate then if you're in europe you can look at portugal or spain or something like that uh, if you are in north america you'd be looking at southern california arizona texas uh, if you're a winter person, if you love the snow, then obviously the northern states would suit you better and then northern Europe would suit you better if you're in Europe. Now for me, Ireland is a very temperate climate, doesn't have a lot of extremes, it doesn't have really hot summers and it doesn't have really cold winters either. Um, it snows once every couple of years and it lasts a couple of days. Now, I'm not really a big fan of the snow. I'm not a big fan of the heat either. So Ireland suits me perfectly. And then depending on what country you're in and things like that, there's microclimates. So even in Ireland, there are microclimates. And if you're in the east or the southeast, you'll get better weather than you would in the northwest. Um, there will be other factors in play that will help you decide where you're going to be. So we're going to move on to the next thing on the list, which is geography. And the geography would be the landscape itself. So do you like plains? Do you like mountains, the coast? Do you like lakes? Um, so what features do you prefer? And for me, I like the mountains. Um, that's my preferred area. And I'm in a, I'm in a mountainous area of the country. Um, so I love the landscape out here, but there are also lakes and I'm not too far away from the coast if I want to go to the coast. Um, and then soil types. Uh, so sand, there's sandy soils, loamy soils, clay soils. Uh, and all have their own benefits and drawbacks. Um, depending on what you want to do, what you want to be growing. Uh, for me, clay, I like clay. Um, if you know how to work with it, it's, it's probably one of the better things to be growing in. Um, and then there's flora and fauna. So do you like coniferous trees? Maybe you want to be in a more Northern climate if you, if you want coniferous trees or do you like more deciduous woodlands? Uh, what kind of predators are in the area? Uh, these are all things that you need to consider when you're choosing where you want to live. Um, so I'm going to grab a bit of my tea. And then the next thing is population density. So um, how close do you want to be to a city? How close do you want to be to a town? And how close do you want to be to a village? These are all going to play a part. They're also going to determine what facilities and amenities are available to you. Um, I wanted to be somewhere very rural and very quiet. My village has like three to 500 people in it. Very small, but it's also not too far from, it's not too far from Sligo town, which is a population of about 20,000. Um, as I don't have a car, uh, one thing, one factor that I was looking at was the distance between whatever house I choose and a local shop to get food. And so whatever house I chose had to be within a five to eight kilometer radius of a shop. I think that's like the, 
that's the limit that I that I would have set for myself with a bicycle. So any house I chose had to have that. Um, and then the next thing is the property itself. So I've got a couple of things here. So the size of the property, there's the shape of the property. Uh, like there's a lot of awkward shaped properties. Like my property isn't a perfect square. It's it's a bit odd, but uh, there's some that are very odd that I looked at that didn't really suit me. Like there's ones that are like really long properties, just didn't appeal to me. But it might appeal to some people. Uh, some weird triangular ones and and all that. Um, size I was looking for an acre um, if I could get more I would have taken more but I wanted at least an acre um, then there's the soil on that specific property so if you're general soils but then there's like that your specific soil on the property you're looking at um, the orientation of the property so where you on the north side of a hill the south side of a hill those types of things um, the, like are you on a slope or not at all uh, is there a risk of flooding uh, there was one property I did look at that looked fine when I was there but half of it would is underwater in the winter um, and you wouldn't know there's no river nearby it's just groundwater comes up in the winter so these are things that you need to look out for and I asked a local kid actually when I was looking at it and he said that he saw the water touching the house one year. So I'm glad I didn't go with that one. Um, and then privacy, distance from the road. I, I did, there's a lot of these old cottages like what I have. They are right on the road. And um, I wanted one that was set back from the road. So that was something just personally for me. I do want a little bit of privacy. Um, I don't have the privacy that I wanted. Uh, as you all know, but I have planted my trees, so that's something I can fix. You know, so we're kind of halfway down the malleability scale. Um, and the next thing is the building itself, the house itself. So what type of building? Do you want a country house? Do you want a log cabin? I want, like me personally, I wanted a traditional Irish cottage. Uh, I love them. I love the design. Um, I like how efficient they are. And how simple their construction is, it's very easy to understand. Um, the orientation of the building is also important. So, obviously mine is south facing. Um, the condition of the property and the feasibility for you and your skill set in order to fix it. Or you and your budget in order to hire people to fix it for you if you don't have the skills. Uh, so all of these things are uh, very important. Um, and they're kind of everything on the hard the hard attributes of your property choice there are a couple other things <clears throat> that i was looking for um i wanted water nearby i wanted easy access to water so whether that be a river or a well or something i happen to have both here and uh i also wanted to have easy enough access to the coast if I wanted to get seaweed for for my garden as a fertilizer and castles I wanted a castle nearby somewhere because historically castles were only built somewhere that needed to be defended and what needed to be defended was wealth and wealth back then would have been mostly in uh, natural resources agriculture things like that so it gives you a pretty good idea that there's the soil is good um if there's castles nearby and there's a lot of castles out here so that was one thing just personally for me that i was looking into um now we'll move on to the soft stuff and right? let me get another sip of tea before that the uh soft stuff community and I have, I have a good community here and community is really important to me. I've talked about it a number of times in the past. It's probably your most important resource um, that you have. Uh, I think it's even more important than your soil is <laughs> just people. 
Um, I didn't do a lot of like looking into the community for this place. Um, it was the middle of lockdowns when I came here, so there wasn't a lot of people driving around. There wasn't a lot of activity going on when I came to look at the property. But I just saw there's a number of schools around. Um, the village itself looked very clean. It was just there was, I got a vibe. <laughs> That's all I could say. I was, I just got a good vibe off the place. Um, and yeah, so that that is important. But again, it's kind of you don't have to be a part of the community if you don't want to. Um, not everybody is like that. I understand. So that's something that you have to decide for yourself. Um, a lot of people ask me, like, even just locals around here, like, oh, do you have any connection to the area? Do you know anybody? Did you spend any time here? And I didn't. <laughs> um, but I would recommend that you at least go for, like, a two-week holiday, stay in a and b and act as if you are living in the area, just so you get an idea of what it's going to be like. Um, and then the language and the culture is also very important. Um, I did consider other countries, um, mostly North America because I'm a US citizen. So I did consider that, uh, but I decided not to mostly because of cultural reasons. And I like, I know I could fit in there, but um, I just love I just love Ireland. <laughs> I love the Irish culture. I love the Irish people. Um, I just I just yeah. Um, I I can relate to that anyone. I can be I can go to any village or town, and I can fit in. Um, and I like that. There's a YouTuber, um, David the Good, the Survival Gardener. Um, he was living in Granada for three years. Uh, so he left the United States to go do experimenting with gardening in Central America. And, you know, everybody was welcoming and accepting. There's a lot of expats living there. And, you know, him and his family had a good time. But then when the, when lockdowns happened with coronavirus in 2020... Uh, a lot of the locals just started uh, not being as welcoming and it kind of made him and his family feel more uncomfortable and they decided to go back to America. So these are things that, that you kind of want to think about. Um, like if I was living in Portugal, I don't know the language, I, would, I can't relate to the culture, the people can't really relate to me. Um, so that is just, yeah, I just couldn't do it myself. Um, but then everybody's different. Everybody has their own, their own criteria. Um, but it's definitely something to think about and to consider uh, is the language and the culture. Can you fit in and can you be accepted there? Now, the story with the property I, I had a deposit on before this, um, it was in Foxford and Mayo and I'm glad I didn't get it in the end. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that I'm here. I'm where I'm meant to be. But, uh, that property was 0.7 acres. It had a right, of, it had a right of way going through it uh, for access to some fields that were behind it. Um, there was a neighbor like, right next door so i didn't it wouldn't have had as much privacy as this um but i did like the area i love the town the the people were very welcoming um yeah just it felt good and it felt right it was on a the house was actually on a north facing slope as well so it would have been a little bit miserable in the winter because i had a lot of trees behind it as well so it wouldn't have gotten a lot of sunlight it wouldn't have been very efficient for heat and stuff as well uh, but uh, that was on the market for 10 years. And I think I was the fourth person to go view it in 10 years. And the asking price was 35000 
and they agreed to 25,000. Um, so <laughs> that was 10,000 off of the, like a third, a, yeah, a third of the asking price off. Um, and I put my 3,000 deposit down and a week later the estate agent called and he said that someone in the family wanted to buy it. So I think this person was hoping to inherit the property and didn't want to spend anything. Well, as soon as someone put a deposit down on it and there was a sale going through, then they start, decided to speak up. And that's something that can happen. Um, and it's just kind of par for the course. Like there was other properties. I, there was a place, I can't remember where it was. But there was a place with four acres that I was looking at that was within my budget and I put an offer down on that and the estate agent accepted it but before we got to the deposit point he called me back and said oh the, the seller changed his mind and there's there's a lot of these things buying properties especially I think it's especially in Ireland it's just a very weird and a uh, tough, very, very tough thing to do. Because uh, you, when you see a property, you start imagining yourself there. You start dreaming and making plans and like, oh, I could do this, I could do that. And then it falls through and all of those dreams are crushed. And that happens over and over and over again. So you need to be very strong-willed to, to go through with this. But eventually I found this place. And as soon as I set foot on the property, I just kind of knew that this was the one and um, just from cycling through the area and then standing on it it just felt right um, and although I didn't get the privacy that I wanted there's a couple of things that I didn't get that I was looking for but the the perfect property and this is what I tell people is the perfect property is the one that you're willing to compromise for and I was willing to compromise for this one. And that's where the budget kind of comes into play. You're going to work your way back up that list. And you're going to be making compromises. Um, but you're making compromises on those more malleable things that you can change in the future. So although I don't have like the privacy that I want. I have planted all my trees. And then in the next three to five years, I will have that privacy. Uh, so... Don't be afraid to lower your standards. Um, I've had friends that they were looking at these properties and they missed out. Um, actually, I had a friend. I have a friend that was looking at my property a couple of months before me. Uh, I think he he even sent me a link to it, and I never even bothered looking at it <laughs> when he sent it to me. Uh, but he he ended up not getting it because he wanted a little bit more land. And um, I don't think he has full regrets about it. But I think he re he did regret it a little bit because he's seen what I've been able to do with it. And the community that I have here. So, uh, yeah. Just don't be afraid to lower your standards and make these compromises in order to make your dream work. So yeah, I think that's everything and that's uh, all of the criteria that I went through and how I found this property and that's the little story about Foxford and how that fell through. But uh, yeah, I think, I think I've covered everything. If I haven't, let me know down in the comments. We can discuss it down there and uh, I'll see you in the next video.